Coming up, an update on a barricade situation in one eastern Kentucky county. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Kentucky State Police are searching for a suspect they say was believed to be barricaded in a building in Olive Hill in Carter County. Troopers say when a special response team made entry this evening, the suspect was not inside. They say they are checking other locations the suspect may have gone to. They now believe they managed to exit without being seen before troopers had it surrounded. The suspect's father says he owns that building and it's used as a garage. The suspect is not considered armed and dangerous, but they say they would like to serve active warrants on him as soon as possible. A deputy with the Wise County, Virginia Sheriff's Office is being credited with saving a woman from an apartment fire. Deputy Nathaniel Baker responded to a disturbance call this morning at the Inman Village Apartments in Appalachia. When he arrived, he noticed smoke coming from under the door of an apartment. Deputy Baker forced his way into the apartment after hearing no answer to his calls, finding smoke and flames, as well as a woman in the living room who he was able to remove. Firefighters from the Appalachia Fire Department were able to extinguish the fire and provide medical attention. The cause of that fire has not been released. A Kentucky judge has blocked a pair of bills aimed at weakening Governor Bashir's authority. One bill dealt with executive branch contracting, shifting authority to a legislative committee. The other would prevent the governor from challenging laws in court. The bill would make the Kentucky Attorney General the only statewide officer that could use taxpayer money to challenge the constitutionality of a bill. Today was the last day to register to vote in the primary election. The cutoff was at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Perry County Clerk Wayne Napier tells us many offices in the county are on the ballot. He says this is one of the biggest elections he can remember. Very important offices we have, and people should come out and vote because you hear a lot of people complain, and if you don't vote for a certain person, you can't complain, in my opinion. The primary is May 17th, a little less than a month from now. While there are many competitive races in Perry County, nobody filed to run against Judge Executive Scott Alexander or Hazard Mayor Happy Mobellini. Janssen Pharmaceuticals reaches a $99 million settlement for the company's alleged role in West Virginia's opioid crisis. That state's attorney general claimed the pharmaceutical giant and its parent company, Johnson & Johnson, persuaded doctors to prescribe opioids more frequently, saying they were safe and more effective than other drugs. Attorneys say this helped spike opioid use for chronic pain issues, eventually leading to a rise in fatal overdoses. This settlement is subject to approval from the state's political subdivisions and cities and counties will get a lump sum payment. Johnson & Johnson settled with the state of New York last year for $230 million for a similar situation. Founder, president, and CEO of Addiction Recovery Care, or ARC, Tim Robinson, was recognized today as a Beacon of Hope Award winner. He was given the 2022 Congressman Hal Rogers Beacon of Hope Award at the Prescription Drug Abuse and Heroin Summit in Atlanta, Georgia. Robinson was also congratulated by Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell and Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir. The summit runs through Thursday. Plenty of clouds still hanging around at this hour, but we're not done yet with the cold weather either. Will eventually start to clear out later on tonight. Obviously, you can't see the clouds necessarily from this view. I-75 in Mount Vernon, thanks to the cloudy skies overhead. High up camera UVA wise, you can kind of tell those clouds overhead. Low to mid 30s right now around the region today. We topped out in the upper 40s to near 50 in most spots. Some areas like Middlesboro ended up in the middle 50s. As of now. A lot of low 40s and upper and middle 30s around the region. We'll continue to see those temperatures drop tonight as we slowly, ever so slowly watch some of those clouds continue to scoot out, maybe even a few showers as well. So mostly cloudy skies eventually turning partly cloudy overnight. We're in the mid 30s as winds 
actually eh, stay a little on the breezy side tonight. That calm wind was a little bit earlier on. I'll have the very latest on when we could see uh, much warmer temperatures coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. All right, Evan, thank you. April is National Give Life Month and Pikeville Medical Center celebrated today with a pause to give life. It was the most silent the hospital atrium has been as officials hosted a moment of silence for the donors, their families, and the transplant patients who have been part of the process. Liver transplant recipient Barry Estep shared his story of living with a rare disease for nearly two years, nearing what doctors believed was his end until a donor gave him a second chance at life at the last minute. I'm still just so thankful and so blessed that they, they give and, and so freely give that gift of life. And you know, that's why you have to look at, you know, you're given one of the most precious gifts that they're on the face of this earth. The family all advocates for organ donation now, saying it is the only thing that has given them the last three years with Barry. Visit our website to see how you can become a donor. A federal judge in Florida struck down a national mask mandate on airplanes and mass transit today, and some airlines and airports began repealing their face covering requirements. The major airlines switched to a mask optional policy, leading to cheers from passengers when the changes were announced over loudspeakers. The Transportation Security Administration said it will no longer enforce the mask requirement, and some airports almost immediately did away with their mandates. It's a lot easier these days to get at home COVID-19 tests, but many of those test results are not being reported, leading to a drastic undercount of cases. The Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation estimates only 7% of positive COVID-19 cases in the U.S. are now being detected. That would mean case rates are actually more than 14 times higher than officially reported. While cases have been undercounted throughout the pandemic, some states, including Ohio and New York, no longer use positivity rates in the fight against COVID. The CDC is also now emphasizing hospitalization rates over case counts. USPS announced it will implement a new standard for its first class package service starting May 1st. The agency expects the new service standard will impact a third of its volume. The new standard will allow USPS to add an extra day or two to deliver these packages and still consider them on time. Packages sent via first class package service weigh less than one pound. Businesses rely on first class package service for items that include small electronics and prescription drugs. One Breathitt County High School student will be representing Kentucky on the national level. Alec Zierer has been chosen to attend the 2022 Washington Youth Summit on the Environment at George Mason University. He was nominated by his pre-calculus teacher, Penny Turner. She says he hopes this will open the doors for more students in the future. For some students, that's a little big deal. But Alec's family was very supportive. And yes, I would love to see other students take an opportunity to go outside of you know, this county or even this state and see what's out there on the national stage. So they can, you know, kind of check things out. Zero will be one of 100 students going to Washington, D.C. in June. A senior community in Richmond had a very special visitor stop by last month. Rocket Man the Llama went to Dominion Senior Living to hang out with residents and staff members. And it looks like everyone thoroughly enjoyed the therapy of llamas of the llamas company. Well, the long wait is finally over in Richmond. Bucky's opens tomorrow morning. The giant travel center off exit 83 in Madison County will occupy more than 53,000 square feet and will have around 120 gas pumps. Bucky's is based in Texas. This will be its first Kentucky store to open. Two more are under construction in Western Kentucky. The Richmond store will employ more than 400 people. The store opens bright and early at 6 a.m. tomorrow. A ceremony is scheduled for 11 a.m. Well, Louisa native Noah Thompson got a really nice 20th birthday present. America voted the construction worker into the top 10 on American Idol tonight. Judges then picked four others to move on in the competition, so now it's the top 14. 
Thompson saying Jason Isbell's Cover Me Up on tonight's show. The next episode is Sunday. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, it's the number one cause of bankruptcy in the United States and millions are under its crushing weight. Our investigative team tells you who is helping with medical debt and ways you can navigate the complicated system once you're diagnosed with debt. But first, we've got abundant sunshine back in the forecast as soon as tomorrow. Full details are on the way next. All Kentucky.